Hello wonderful people, it's Shaviv and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. If you want to have the best possible experience using Procreate, there are some settings that you absolutely need to look at. And in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to show you what those settings are and I also give you some pointers and how you might want to adjust them to have, as I was saying, the best possible experience in Procreate. And make sure you stick around until the end because I'm also going to be giving you some pro tips on how to organize the app. I may or may not have created a freebie to help you with that, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to talk about it later in the video. For now, let's just start with the very beginning. So your new iPad, you can simply open it up by tapping on the button that is going to be in one of the corners. And you're going to get this really cool screen with all the changing languages. And you can just simply swipe towards the top. You're then going to have a few setup options. First one being the language. So you can just go through these options and pick what you like. If you have another iPad, you also have the option to just transfer the data automatically by bringing the other iPad close to the new one. I personally like whenever I get an Apple device, let it be a phone or a computer to just start fresh. So I'm just going to do the setup manually and then I'm going to come back with you guys because there is some sensitive information um, that I will be needing to input in the next few steps. Great, so once you have all your settings in, this is the screen that you should see. So the home screen with all your app icons. Now, if you want to install Procreate, you need to locate the App Store app, which is this one right here. Just tap on it and welcome to the App Store. Sometimes Procreate is featured on the front page, but honestly, I just use the search bar and just type in Procreate. Doop. For the iPad, you're gonna want Procreate the full version, not Procreate Pocket. And it is, well, I'm in Canada, so it's $13.99, but in the US, I think it's just $10 US. And you just purchase, purchase it like that. So it is going to download the app. It might take a little bit of time depending on your internet connection, but it shouldn't be too bad. And once your app is finally downloaded, you can just click on open and it's going to open Procreate. And you're gonna see that there are some canvases already made with some examples. So you can tap on any one that you might want. And this way you're gonna be able to access the menu with the settings, which is going to be on the wrench icon here at the top, and then in preference right here. The first four options are fairly simple and they just help you customize the interface so the way everything appears on your screen. So the first option is just light interface. It makes everything lighter. I quite like keeping it darker. The second option is the right hand interface. So you can see if I activate it, this little menu is going to switch to the other side. Now very quickly, what this menu does here, the top option is the size of your brush and the lower option is the opacity of your brush. You can also place it differently by just dragging from the outside of the iPad and then moving this cursor around. So again, I'm just gonna go in my settings. I personally like to have it on the left, although I am right-handed, so <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> now I've put a brush cursor here. If you activate this, you can see the shape of your brush. So let's say I pick a funky brush here. So if we start painting, we're going to see the cursor of the brush. If I go a bit slower, you're probably gonna see it. It's this gray outline that is moving around the screen. I personally like to have it off, but that is absolutely a personal preference. It can be really helpful, especially if you are newer to digital art to know where you're drawing. This project canvas is great if you want to connect your iPad to a second interface, so another screen, so that you can see your artwork in even more details. Personally, I don't have that, so I'm just keeping it off. Now this is where it gets really interesting. Connect third-party stylus, that is if you don't have an Apple Pencil, you can just follow the steps here and with the third-party stylus, otherwise the Apple Pencil you can connect with Bluetooth, which is going to be in the Bluetooth menu of your iPad. And I think probably my favorite thing to adjust is the pressure curve. When I was saying if you want to have the most optimal experience in Procreate, this is what I was telling you about. 
So the pressure curve might be a little bit intimidating at first, but don't worry. The main thing to remember is that the horizontal axis here defines the pressure sensitivity, and then the vertical axis defines what is released by your brush. So basically, if I was to do this, it means that my brushes release a lot with lower pressure, as opposed to if I were to do this, my brushes would release not a lot with really high pressure. What I personally like to do is do some sort of an S curve because you can add up to six points. This is a bit intense, but <laughs> a small little S curve similar to this, which means when I don't press a lot, there's a little bit less that is going to come out of my brush. And when I do press a lot, there's a little bit more that is going to come out. So basically it just makes the pressure sensitivity more intense. It kind of amplifies the pressure that I put. So if you're drawing for long periods of time, your hands can get kind of tired. And that pressure curve, that little shape here can be really helpful in making your movement feel effortless and kind of help you preserve your wrist energy for longer periods of time. Be careful though, changing the pressure curve if you have custom brushes, for example, my brush set, if you buy them, if you change the pressure curve too much, the brushes might start to behave really, really strangely. So just keep that in mind. And if you ever buy professional brushes and for some reason they feel weird, just go ahead, look at your pressure curve and hit reset, try the brushes again and it should probably fix your problem. And guys, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this part of the video, please go ahead and comment settings below. I know it might sound a little bit crazy, but it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better. And it's also really cool because you guys know me, but I don't know you. And whenever you leave a comment, I get to see your username, your name, your face. And it's just really wonderful to see the great creative community that we're building here on this channel. So again, go ahead and comment settings and we'll keep going. So pressure curve, that is probably, like I was saying, the most important thing. But there's also here the gesture control option. So there's a lot to unpack here and I'm obviously not going to go through all of the options, but feel free to look at them because they can kind of make your workflow a little bit easier. That being said, I have a little disclaimer with these gesture control. If you do buy Procreate brushes from professionals or if you follow tutorials, for example, on YouTube or on Udemy or something like that, and if you have any changes in your gesture controls, you might have a hard time following the tutorials because this really is going to affect what all the tools are doing. So for example, if I look at the, just the first option smudge here, what it says is whenever you use a finger on the screen, it is always going to smudge. So basically it tells Procreate that finger means smudge. Um, you could have that with the Apple Pencil, so whenever you draw with the Apple Pencil, it would smudge. So you can see that this can get really helpful if you don't necessarily want to follow tutorials and just want to speed up your workflow, but it can also get a little bit more confusing. So use this with a lot of caution. And you can do the same with yeah, eraser and a bunch of other things. The last two settings we're going to look at is the rapid undo delay and the selection mask visibility. So to look at them, I added some <laughs> beautiful little lines here. And what rapid undo delay is, is basically in Procreate, if you hold two fingers or tap with two fingers, it does undo. And if you tap with three fingers, it does redo. I have a full video about gestures, which I will link in the description below. If you want to check it out, this is not the point. But rapid undo is if you hold with two fingers on the screen. Oops. It is going to rapidly undo. Basically, rapid undo delay is the time that you have to hold your two fingers on the screen before it starts to undo. I like to just leave it as is, but you can play with that. And then selection mask visibility is when you draw a selection with the selection tool, you can kind of see you have these diagonal lines. Well, you can barely see you have these diagonal lines and the diagonal lines mark the outside of the selection. So if we go back and change that, you can see that it just kind of increases the visibility of our mask. I quite like to have it somewhere in the middle, you know, around 40% um, so that you can see it well, especially when I'm filming, you can see the selection well, but it is also not overwhelming. So these are the settings that you might want to play with. Again, with the pressure curve being probably the most interesting one, or at least the one I really recommend that you experiment with. And with that covered, it is time to look at how to organize your files within the app. 
So here's the Procreate gallery on my older iPad, which is the one that I used for the last three years. And as you can see, everything is organized in stacks and all the stacks have covers that are organized in categories and color coded and all of that. So this is the template that I made for you. I'm going to show it to you in just a second. But before that, we need to know what are stacks and how to create them. So basically, stacks are just groups of canvases that help you organize your gallery. So for example, if I click on the cute one, you're going to see a few illustrations that I use in my cute tutorials. So that way I always know where they are. They're easy to find. One thing to keep in mind is the first canvas in your stack. So the one on the top left is going to be the cover of your stack once you are in the gallery. And creating stacks is very, very easy. All you have to do is click on the select option here at the top, select the canvases you want to have in your stack. They need to be canvases, not stacks themselves. And then you can click on stack and you're going to see it just creates a pile of canvases. So super easy. You can then rename your stack by tapping on it. If you have the Apple Pencil, you can just write in the zone. Otherwise, you can just uh, use the keyboard that's going to pop up. And that's it. You have your stack. So if we click on it, we're going to see all our canvases are in there. I want this template one to be the cover, so I'm just going to click on it, hold my finger, and then move it around. And like I was mentioning earlier in the video, this template is totally free for you to download. If you want to get it, it will be linked in the description below, as well as any annotations in the comments. And the download you're going to get is exactly this Procreate file, this template one. You can then duplicate it and create as many versions as you want, but I'm going to show you how to use it first. So once you download it, just tap on it, open it up, and this is what you're going to see. So we have a few layers in here. The first one being category, it is a text layer. It is this layer here, which is renamed stack for now. But if you tap on it, you can click on edit text. Now, if you have the Apple pencil, you can just write it out. Otherwise, you can type it out. And so for now, I'm going to pretend this is for my children's books category. So I'm just going to rename it to books. The next thing you might want to change is the title here. So again, it's a text layer. You can do the same thing. So either write it out or type on the keyboard. <laughs> and let's pretend this is for a book that would be just called Bunny. I don't know. I, I was not inspired. <laughs> so you could have as many categories as you want and as many like little subcategories as you desire. You can also open the pattern group here and select a pattern. So I have four. One is more of a digital art. One is more book. This one is more random stuff. And this one is just screens and pencils. So you can pick whichever one you like and you can also create your own. So to do that, just create a new layer. I used a gray, so just like a neutral gray. And you might also want to change the blending mode of this layer to multiply so that the gray looks good no matter the background color that you're using. And you might want to lower the opacity somewhere around you know, 80%, again, depending on the gray that you use. So by doing that, you can create your own patterns that are gonna match with the ones that I created. You can also pick whichever color that you want. I created this um, color palette with kind of the rainbow of food. <laughs> so you can pick something in there. Or you can hide this color group and change the background color yourself to a custom color that you want, just like you would change any background color in Procreate. So you really can customize this template to your own needs and your own desire as much as you want. But this is really super helpful. And once you've created a category, for example, here in my books category, all you have to do is click select, select the template, and you can then duplicate it by clicking on duplicate. You're going to see you're going to have two versions of it. You can then tap on one to rename it to whichever subcategory it is. So in my case, bunny. <laughs> and then once that is done, you can actually put it in your stack. So to do that, just hold the finger on it and you can then just move it and place it in whichever stack that you want. Super simple. You're just going to have to hold it on top of the stack and then the stack is going to open like this. So you can see it is now the cover of this stack. Now, let's say you want to move a canvas from one stack to the other. It is also really simple. All you have to do is open your stack, find the canvas you want to move, hold your finger on it, and then you can just change it and put it in a different stack. For now, there is no way to create a stack within a stack, so that is a little bit annoying, but having kind of color-coded covers can really help because that way you can create categories, so that's a little bit less messy. At least, at least I think so. And guys, if you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend that you check this one out in which I'm going to teach you everything you know in order to create your own custom color palettes in Procreate. So just click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.